live to you now, growers. All right. How's everybody doing? My name is Andrew Woodward. I'm from Aero Grow, and you are on the Indoor Growing and Hydroponics Show, Hydroponics, Aeroponics, Indoor Growing. I say this every time. I've never said the name of the show twice the same way. <laughs> and that's okay. It doesn't matter because the content, it uh, keeps evolving, and we're always talking about indoor growing, and we're always talking about hydroponics and aeroponics. That does not change. Um, you're going to hear, by the way, if you've just tuned into the show for the first time, you're going to hear a variety of different uh, whizzes and purring and buzzing and dings behind me, all sorts of weird noises. Um, this is an experimental lab. This is an, an active laboratory that we're actually filming from. And AeroGrow is an actively investigative company that uh, is involved in researching hydroponics uh, and aeroponics and developing new technologies to help people to uh, bring that technology into the home. So you're going to hear a lot of it buzzing behind me. Uh, we've all got, always got something going on behind me. But anyway, the reason I wanted to talk to you tonight is because I want to talk about lighting. Lighting 101, basically. I know the description for this uh, particular broadcast said that um, it would be... Uh, I want to check my microphone here. I think I've got two mics on. Um, the show said it would be like the uh, master class... Whoops, yeah, master class in... Uh, in lighting, it's not exactly a master class tonight. What we're doing tonight is we're going over some of the basics, uh, the questions that I get asked a lot, the questions that I asked a lot when I was first starting out. And um, things have changed since I first started out in terms of the in a world of lighting for indoor growing, things have changed an awful lot. When I first got into this, it was mostly sodium halide, metal halide lights, um, and high pressure sodium rather and metal halide, and they were very different. They were very different from what we have today with the LED panels. I have one hanging. <laughs> we're going to be using that in a minute. Uh, very different from the LED panels that we have today. These are very efficient and very accurate color reproduction, um, very long-lasting, very lightweight, very easy to work with, easy to obtain, so forth and so on. And they run relatively cool. The metal halides and sodium lamps of the past were... Uh, very expensive, uh, very delicate. Um, they ran very hot. They would heat up your grow space in no time flat. They're like little heaters. They make, in fact, they make better heaters than they do lights. Uh, they were uh, difficult to position because of that heat. That heat was a problem with those lamps because uh, it was a fire hazard. It truly was a fire hazard. Plenty of homes burned down <laughs> back in the day because people had uh, inappropriately installed high pressure lamps of one variety or another for growing indoors and it wasn't done properly and they burned their house down or their RV or whatever. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's happened. But the ones we have today are very safe and we're going to be going over that. But more importantly, even than picking out a, a light, because there are a lot of really great lights available. We've done other videos or talked about that on other videos, but um, plenty of lights are available on Amazon now and through other hydroponic retailers and so forth. But the most important thing, once you have a good light, once you're using a light, and even before you've chosen a light, is to understand how to measure the light. And what are we talking about in, in the grow world when we talk about measuring the light and what plants actually need? And there are a lot of acronyms in anything that you get into these days. <laughs> it seems like everything is an acronym. I don't think I've, I don't think I've spoken a, a complete sentence with whole words in 25 years. But yeah, everything's an acronym. You've got PAR, you've got PPFD, you've got uh, also, and, and it gets confusing. And, and the thing is, it's not really that confusing. It's just that because of all the jargon and the lingo and the yada yada, everybody gets caught up in that and thinks that, oh my God, I'm going to have to have a doctor to do this. And no, it's not, it's not true. Uh, what I'm going to show you in a second here is... Um, First of all, if you go to the website, if you go to aerogrow.com, A-E-R-O-G-R-O.com, and you go to the blog section, you will find some charts for DLI, a recommended DLI chart for, um, that's lighting, DLI. We're about to go over all that in a second. I just want to tell you that ahead of time if you want to go and download it. Um, there is a, in fact, I can show you what you'll be looking for here. If you give me a second. If you go over to the website, 
you will find in the blog section the Daily Light Integral or DLI for Cannabis as a downloadable. There are a couple of things there, actually. I created a couple of different things for you. There's that one, and then there's also uh, a, um, there's a full chart, all right? Uh, there's a full chart there that you can download that shows you all the vegetables. It shows you like everything you can imagine that you can grow. It'll show you the DLI or the light requirement per day for those plants. And now with that being said, I'm going to show you something. Now, for many, many years, up until very recently, actually forever up until recently, if you wanted to measure light, uh, in your grow situation, you needed to measure it using what's called a PAR meter. All right, we well, still do, but PAR meters, as far as the handheld, I don't have one here to show you, but a handheld PAR meter, they tend to be extremely expensive. And that keeps a lot of people from working with the PAR meter, which is unfortunate because there's something new on the market which is just as accurate as a handheld par meter for hundreds of dollars and the new one is under a hundred bucks and I'm going to show it to you so check this out now here's the thing a lot of people are going to say yeah but I can go to the app store and I can download an app and I can use my phone to measure the light okay no you can't <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna knock down that house of cards right now that is not a thing do not be tempted to play around with the apps the way that I did <laughs> I was curious I wanted to see if it was for real and I found out it's not for real but um, here's why it's not for real a par meter a real par meter that you pay hundred typically would pay hundreds of dollars for has a very dedicated specialized sensor built into it that measures wavelengths of light that are beyond just the visible spectrum that we can see with our eyes as humans and it does that very accurately now your iPhone or whatever phone you have has lots of sensors in it it, it depends on a lot of sensors to do what it does and to create images and and video and all these fancy things it, does, it uses sensors for all of that but it doesn't have a dedicated sensor that's made to measure the frequencies of light that are required when you're measuring for PAR. And that's the problem. If you wanted to measure PAR with your iPhone, you could, but first you'd have to take this sensor, shrink it down really small, and fit it into the iPhone. And then you could measure PAR with your iPhone. Since you can't measure it with your iPhone, the next best thing is that you buy the sensor that then talks to an app on your phone. This sensor provides the data and the app provides the data in a way that you can understand as far as a par value, it gives you a par value. And a, and a, uh, a DLI, daily light, day, daily light Integral is what DLI stands for. And, and we're going to talk about that again in a second, too. But I just want to explain, your iPhone's no good for, for doing this. So forget about it. Now, you can use it with what I'm going to show you today. Like I just said, it works in, in conjunction with an app, and it works very well. Now, this sensor is, uh, I'll show it to you real quick here. It's called the VBR100 Light Meter. There it is there. And it is literally, it's just a sensor uh, device, little sensor gizmo with a couple of batteries in it and a little on-off switch on the back. And its dedicated purpose in life is to measure those frequencies of light. And they give you a waterproof bag here, which is very cool. And it's double sealed waterproof bag. It's a very common thing for waterproofing to have two, basically it's like a, a giant Ziploc bag with two, two zipper seals on it to give you additional protection from water uh, so obviously it's not waterproof uh, but it sort of is with the bag you know so yeah uh, that's that's what you get um, it's uh, believe it was $85 last I checked let me show you the uh, let me show you the listing for it uh, par meter on Amazon there we go that's what it looks like that's what you're looking for 
Um, and you can use it to also measure the grid in your grow tent. Guys that are familiar with that, you'll know what I'm talking about. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, now that I've shown you all the goodies in the hardware, let's talk about what are we talking about when we're measuring the light. So, all right. The, the, uh, wait, what is that? The, 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 what? Sorry, I just noticed I had a uh, setting off on my border. Anyway, I digress. Anyway, so what you're going to see when you start looking at light is you're going to see this thing, PPFD, this acronym. Photosynthetic, basically it stands for photosynthetically, re photosynthetically act, I'm sorry, giving you the wrong information here. I should have started with PAR. PPFD comes before PAR. PPFD, hold on, I should pull up my documents here so I don't, I don't get lost in my own thoughts here. Sorry about that. Uh, there are a couple different things we're measuring, a couple different things we're talking about when we talk about measuring the light, all right? Uh... The sunlight, the sun, as it beats down on the earth, is delivering every wavelength of light that the earth can receive. It's visible light plus the invisible light spectrums, which include the lights, uh, the uh, spectra, the uh, wavelengths of light that we are going to need for growing. Okay, so you know, where's my document here? DLI. Well, I have that one for you. That's good. Uh, yeah, all right. I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, I lost it somehow. Um, I had this all laid out. Oh, boy, I'll tell you, I always have these shows all laid out, and then I get here, and then everything, <laughs> everything falls apart. <laughs> okay. Photosynthetic, phot I knew I was never going to be able to remember that. PPFD stands for Photosynthetic Photon Flux Density. Try saying that three times fast. Photosynthetic photon flux density. Basically, here's what it is. When the sun shines down on the earth, like I said, it contains all those frequencies of light, those wavelengths of light, visible and invisible, that hit the earth. Some of them are responsible for allowing our plants to grow. Some of them are responsible for heating up the earth and providing our heat. Uh, others, there's infrared in that spectrum, there's ultraviolet in that spectrum, responsible for many a sunburn. There are many different wavelengths, right? But the ones that we are talking about in the world of plants only fall into a small part of that entire spectrum. So when we are talking about PPFD, we are talking about the wavelength of light that reaches the earth and makes it to the area where the plants can actually use it. In other words, it needs to make it beyond the the veil that covers the earth there's there are these membranes that cover the earth these that hold our atmosphere in and the sunlight has to get through all of that to get down to the plants so once it gets through the clouds and the atmosphere and all that and it's working its way down towards the earth the light that is usable by the plants that actually made it down all the way as its light friends died up above the light that made it down to be usable is the ppfd that is the active the, 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 well, it's a photosynthetically active light that can be used by the plants that actually arrives down to the earth and is available. Okay, that's the PPFD. Now, the PAR, the photosynthetically active radiation, is again that wavelength of light that reaches your plants that is actually able to be used because it's actually reaching the leaf okay so what we are measuring with this meter is we're measuring the viable light waves the light waves that are actually going to be usable by your plant we're measuring how much of that you get in this small area per unit of time uh, an hour two hours three hours whatever it is we control that through the software but that's what this is measuring. This is measuring the photosynthetically active radiation, the PAR, that is available to the plants. Out of all of that light that made it down to the earth, the stuff that's available to the plant is what this is measuring because this is you're holding this right over your plant and, or where your plant would theoretically be. And it represents a stand-in for the plant. So it's measuring what the plant will ultimately receive. Okay. So... 
we've got that total amount of usable light. Then we have the amount of usable light that makes it to the plant. Then we have what does the plant actually require per day? Like if I'm a pepper plant, how much light do I need? How many hours of that really good stuff do I need per day? And if I'm a tomato plant, how much do I need? If I'm a cannabis plant, how much do I need? And I have a chart for that for you. You can go and download that one too. I'm going to show it to you. I believe I do have that one programmed in here. Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, DLI image chart. Okay, well, for example, for example, this one's for cannabis. But as you can see, on the bottom, on the bottom, uh, starting over from the, uh, over uh, right here, starting on this corner, and moving to the right, you've got the plant age in weeks. And on the left-hand side, you have the DLI, or daily light integral, the amount of light, the measurement of light, that each plant will require, or the cannabis plant will require, day by day, day one, day two, or sorry, week one, week two, week three, you can see that on week one, the DLI is right around 12. On week two, it's around 16. At week three, it's around 20. At week four, it's around 30, and so forth. It goes up, and then once it starts to enter into the flowering stage, it goes back down again, and then starts to trickle back up. So you can actually ride this wave and adjust your light as your plants require it why would you do that okay the reason you would do that is a couple fold if you give your plant if you if your light is too close to the leaves you can burn your plants you literally give them a sunburn if and then you're just wasting electricity too as well so you're burning your plants and wasting electricity. That's it's not a good day. It's not a good look. Now, if it's too far away, if your light is too far away from your plants, your plants are not getting enough light. They're going to start getting leggy and reaching for the light, or they're going to get uh, depleted. They're going to they're going to yellow. They're going to lots of things can happen when they don't get enough light. So the light has to be close enough that it can deliver the amount of light, of the DLI, that that plant requires. So that's where the measurement tool comes in. So right now, for example, I'm going to show you how this works. I'm going to get on the camera here. So this works off the, uh, I, mean, I have it set up on the iPad uh, to make it easier for everybody to see tonight. But um, you can run it also off of your phone. Uh, so there's an app that you download, and the app just oop, got a little glare there. The app just connects to the device, which on the back you just turn it on, and a little green light comes on like that, right? Set that there for a second, and then we hit the VBR 100, and it will connect to it. There we go. Now. Move this mic a little bit. There we go. Okay, so when you get to the home screen here, you'll notice that you can oh, get the focus here. And you will notice that it will allow you to measure the lux, the PPFD, or to act as a PPFD collector. Now, what PPFD is, is just the straight measurement of the, the viable light usable by the plants. The PPFD collector is when you're measuring out your tent in a square and you're measuring each area to see how much light is falling on each grid area of your tent, right? On the on the floor of the tent. That's that's a, a grid pad running a grid pattern. And we'll do that. We're not gonna do it on this show, but we will do that. And the the lux, basically starting from the top, the lux is just total amount of light. It's lux is nothing. It, it means nothing to you. It's great if you're measuring the amount of light from your light bulbs in your house so that you can light your living room and see. But lux will tell you nothing usable when it comes to plants. All that's measuring is a very gross way of measuring light. Uh, like putting it in a bucket. <laughs> Let's put that light in a bucket. Call it lux. Uh, it's, it's useless. But the PPFD, again, that's what we're going for. So I'll hit PPFD. 
Now, on this screen, you have your options available for what type of light you want to measure. You can measure uh, LED, just straight white LED, or metal halide, which is also uh, in that same light wave uh, spectrum. Or you can measure, measure colored LED, blended LEDs, which is what we have. That's what we're going to be measuring. Or you can measure high pressure sodium. Or you can measure sunlight. And you'll notice that the measurements change a bit because the different algorithm, they change as I go from HPS to LED to LED compact metal halide, back down to sunlight. So, I mean, it's different. It's different depending on what type of light it is. Now, the PPFD, the, the photosynthetically blah, 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 blah. I'm never going to remember to say that. The PPFD is measured cons constantly. We're using the, uh, the, the, the light sensor here. And it's translating. It's, it's converting it into a DLI measurement that you can see here. Now, this is a very small amount of light right here in the studio, actually. My DLI is pathetic. It's like 0.19 or something. So let me give you an example. Before we go into this too far, let me show you an example uh, again of, whoops, of the, um, which one was that? The chart? This one. So again, the PPF, uh, sorry, the, uh, the DLI, the DLI for cannabis, for example, on let's say week six, is 45 okay so that's a lot of light now <laughs> 45 yeah that's a lot of light so what we want is we want this dli to be up around 45 if we're going to have any chance of growing that cannabis plant right so we're going to have to add some light okay so watch this Alexa, hang 10 on. Okay, that's the grow light next to me. <laughs> wow, man, that's bright. That's the grow light next to me. I guess you figured that much out. Okay, so now you can see the DLI just sitting here on the desk. I haven't done anything else but turn it on. It's over, it's over here. It's 1.188. Okay, so it went up a little bit. But watch this. When I bring this over to the light, I hold it up to the light. Holy cow. Now we're at 35. 35. Bring it all the way up to the light. 56. But look at this. Look where I am. I'm holding it right up on the light. And I am at 55. DLI is 55. Right? Now I start moving it away. Start moving it back. Watch the DLI, 29, 21, 14. Okay, and start moving it back over towards the light again. 35, 39, 42, hike. All right, like that, right? That's how that works. Now, check this out. Now, look down here. This is the amount of hours per day that your lighting is on. I'm only at four and a half hours. So if I wanted to, I well, no, I'm not even going to suggest that. I don't want anybody to try this. But the idea being that over the course of a day, which, again, let's take a look at our chart again. Let's go back to the chart. Okay, Alexa, hang 10 off. Alexa, hang 10 off. <laughs> I'll have to show you that little gizmo later, too, that I used to control that. Um, okay, so if we go back to our chart, remember that it was suggesting that on week five, we're up at 45 uh, DLI. And look at the bottom. On the bottom, we're still in the 16 to 24 hour lighting cycle. Now, once we go into vegetative, or sorry, once we start to go into flowering, we'll drop down to 10 to 14 hours. But now, 
here's what I wanted to point out. That's, that's a long time, 16 to 24 hours per day, right? That's a lot of light, okay? Now, remember, when we're looking at this, okay, this DLI, let's turn this light back on. Alexa, hang 10 on. Okay. Hold it up to the light, and we've got a DLI of 46, but that's at four and a half hours per day. We need to be running our lights for 12 to 16 hours a day or longer. So let's say I start cranking this up to 16 hours. 17 hours. Okay, let's, let's call it 16 hours. Okay. Holy cow. 160 DLI. That's way too much light, right? But then again, remember, I'm right up on the light. Your plants are not going to be that close to the light. They're going to be farther away from the light. How far away? Well, let's figure that out. I just pulled it about two feet away. Two feet away from the light. And we're at 30 for the DLI. Okay? So, bring it closer until I get to, four, whoops, until I get to 45. There we go. What's that? That's about a foot. That's about a foot away. I'm about a foot away from the light. Right? See that? So, to get my DLI of 45, or 50, of 45, right around, oop, right around there, to get that 45, running my lights for 16 hours a day, I have to be about a foot away from the light. Now, what do you do? Obviously, you do, okay, Alexa, Hang 10 off. <laughs> it never gets old. Okay. So what do you do? What you do? Alexa, stop. <laughs> attitude. Such attitude. So what do you do? You go into your grow 10 with this and your iPad, your phone, whatever. And you turn on your lights. And you put this right at the canopy of your plants or wherever, wherever you're trying to measure. It doesn't matter, but put it where you want to measure it and that will tell you exactly how far away you need to put the light for how many hours a day you're running it to achieve the target DLI. Now, the good thing, there are several good things about this. First of all, you're saving energy because you're not using too, you're not using more light than you actually need. You're avoiding burning your plants, which is extremely important. You're making sure that your plants do receive the light that they need, which obviously is important. And uh, there's something else I wanted to mention there. I've forgotten it now. But many advantages to getting the light measured correctly. And the thing is, at any different point in the cycle, you're going to need to change that. As you saw from that chart, when you go back to flowering, your total daily light requirement changes, obviously, because you're triggering the flowering cycle. That's, that's how you do it, is by using light. And unless it's an auto flower, that's a different thing. But for normal cannabis uh, uh, growing, for example, you're triggering it with the light, and you need to know that once you cut back on those hours of light, that your plants are still getting the amount of light that they require during that flowering stage, a very important part of the, the flowering, uh, the growth cycle, the flowering stage. So how do you do that? You have to use a meter like this. So the thing about this meter is that it is very inexpensive and it's very accurate. And those are two things that have not gone together ever before. In order to get accuracy until now, you always had to spend, oh boy, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars on a meter. I mean, seriously, some of them are very expensive. They're very accurate, but so is this. This is the first one, really, to come out on the market. One sec. It's the first one to come out on the market that is as accurate. It was, it's tested side by side with, with uh, actual handheld PAR meters, very expensive ones. And it performs just as well. The readings are virtually the same. They're not identical. They never are between two meters. That's a normal thing. 
but between this and a handheld meter, it's close enough that you, you blindfolded, you would swear this was another handheld meter. So it's very good. Uh, the, the software, I think, is also very good. It tells you just what you need to know and nothing else. Uh, there's nothing else going on here. It's actually a very simple thing. I mean, it, it really, when it comes down to it, it's a specialized sensor, and then it's a little piece of software that interprets the data and spits it out a couple different ways, depending on how you intend on using the information. That's all it is. That's all it does. So for around $80, you can have a highly accurate PAR meter with a little handy little waterproof case here. And I don't work for the company. I don't sell these at all. I'm only mentioning this because I know that it's very important for you to have this. I know that people don't have or don't want to spend, you know, seven, eight, or $900 on a meter. Obviously, who would want to do that? So for under 100 bucks, you could get this one, and, and it'll be the greatest thing ever because it'll allow you to fully embrace the light requirements of your plants to fully understand uh, what they're getting, what they're not getting. It will allow you, it'll give you the information that allows you to make good decisions about whether to raise the light up, lower it down, um, you know, how intense it needs to be. Also, when we do get into gridding, I'll show you how that works, where you'll take this and you've got a brand new grow tent and you've got, uh, you know, some new light, let's say the whole thing's new and you want to, you want to blueprint it. You want to, document it. You want to see how much light this light is putting out uh, per, per area of, of the tent and at what height it needs to be to put out that, that uh, DLI. And you can do that very systematically. And then once you know that, once you documented that, there's a lot less guesswork because now you know that that light inside of that tent will produce that amount of light a per for however many hours per day that you need to set it for. And again, high accuracy with something like this. So that's how that works. And this thing uh, is a real game changer as far as I'm concerned. So this is what you're looking for if you wanted to buy something like this. See, I'm telling you, you can't go wrong. It's a great tool to have. VBR 100 light meter. I, as far as I know, this is the only one of its kind available. Well, until I come out with one. <laughs> uh, so yeah, grab it. It's on Amazon. Can't go wrong. Um, I think we're going to, at some point, do a show on, well, first of all, let me check to see if anybody's talking to me. I haven't been checking uh, YouTubes here to see if anybody's dialoguing with me, see if anybody's asking any questions. Nobody's grow. nobody's growing. Okay, nobody's asking me any questions. Well... If you ain't asking, I ain't telling, so no problem. Uh, well, hopefully this has been helpful for you. I just wanted to uh, kind of get you going on how this light measurement works a and show you a reasonably priced tool that you can get right on Amazon today for under $100 that, in my opinion, works extremely well. I would recommend this to anybody and everybody who's doing indoor growing. And this particular meter, I mean, again, I'm not endorsing this company as a company, I don't know them until I got this, but uh, yeah, they're like, it's a very good light meter and it's very good for indoor growers uh, or a great gift for an indoor grower, who knows? So there you go. And with that, we are going to be talking about some upcoming, some other stuff having to do specifically with cannabis production and even some weird stuff uh, having to do with magnets and how magnets can be used to increase seed germination rates dramatically, actually, uh, especially with troublesome seeds that have trouble germinating. Sometimes uh, certain seeds, pepper seeds, sometimes have problems. Uh, certain herbs have trouble sprouting, um, and cannabis seeds can also have trouble sprouting. Magnets can be used to dramatically increase germination rates and also to treat the water that is used to uh, grow the plants and that gets into a little bit of mystery there because we, it's one of these things where uh, we don't even know how magnets work. I mean, it's the bottom line. W science does not have an explanation for how magnets work. We think it has something to do with dark matter, but we don't know. But we do know the effects. We can observe the effects that magnets have on many things. I mean, they're used everywhere in our lives, magnets are. And we can observe their effects on plants. And in other parts of the world, I'm here to tell you, Magnets are being used uh, extensively to treat, uh, well, not only the germination rates, but also the water itself and also the plants themselves. People are experimenting with putting magnets literally with the plant, creating field, creating a field around the plant using the magnet, which 
uh, if done properly, can affect the plant growth because uh, all plants are, uh, well, I'm not going to get too deeply into this, but plants actually use the Earth's magnetism to steer their roots. They have these little hollow, it's going to sound crazy, but it's true, these little hollow balls inside their root tips, and these are aligned with the magnetic poles of the Earth, and they allow the plant, much the way birds, similar to the way birds navigate, uh, they have special equipment to navigate using the, the polarity of the Earth. Plants do too, and so do we. And this is what we're playing with when we actually introduce a magnet artificially into the growth space of a plant. We are kind of messing with the plant's ability to uh, use that onboard equipment that it has. So we're going to be playing with that. We're going to be messing with the plant's indoor equipment, <laughs> onboard equipment, and we're going to see what we can do. We're going to run some experiments using the gardens behind me, and we're going to see what we can do with some magnets. So we've got that coming up. We're going to do some more experimentations with light. And uh, if you guys can give me some ideas, I'd love to do some more things here. Oh, also, coming up in just a few weeks, the high-pressure system for aeroponics. I just received, uh, if you've watched some of the other episodes, you know that I've been waiting for, I've been waiting for this bad boy here to arrive. And this is going to be the basis for the new high pressure, uh, the AeroGrow high pressure system, the, uh, the aeroponic system. The reason this is so great, I've talked about this before, is because this pump is virtually silent as opposed to some of the other aeroponic pumps that have been used, which are, you know, not silent. <laughs> Good Lord. So we're going to be building a system around this, and that's going to be fun. I've got all the stuff now here to do that, so stay tuned. I haven't scheduled that show yet, but it's coming up. So if you're watching, uh, please do leave some comments. Let me know what you would like to see on this program, and let me know if this has been helpful. If it has been helpful, be sure to leave me a like, and don't forget to subscribe. And I hope to see you on the next show, and we'll play around with some magnets, and we'll have some fun. So go grow something. And by all means, if you can and want to, pick up one of these VBR 100s and download the charts off of the AeroGrow website, and they will show you exactly what you need, you know, what your plants need uh, daily as far as the light requirements. So I hope that's helpful as well. And if it is helpful, again, give me a like and subscribe, and I will see you next week. Thanks for joining me. Take care. Go grow something. <laughs>
All right, this is a test of the audio. We are just, you know, figuring out uh, if these filters are actually working or not, or if it's just a bunch of hokum. Uh, we'll be able to tell pretty quickly, though. Right now, we're going to find out. 